sometimes we make plans and life just uh, throws us a little bit of a curveball. Yeah. And so your curveball at this time was? So I was, I was training uh, I was, as part of the Army's world, uh, World class athlete program. I'm I'm in Hayes, Kansas. I'm on leave or, or temporary duty from Germany now. So I'm now back in the United States. My wife and I have been separated as geographic geographically because I did not have command sponsorship. So my family had to stay in the states while I served my duty tour over in Germany. Um, so she's working a job there. I come back to the states, and so we're now we can you know we can talk on a, on the regular. Uh, but I'm in Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and I'm running, and I've just run that 40, 49, 80 race. And so I'm, I'm, I'm blazing. I've, I'm ready for the next one. See if I can do it again. Can I repeat the performance, get within a couple tenths of a second of it? And we go to Hayes, Kansas, which is in the middle of Kansas, uh, Fort Hayes State University, and I'm doing a shakeout on the track. Uh, and for those, I'll kind of break down. Let me just break down the, the 400 meter hurdles. It's one time around the track. It's over 10 obstacles spaced 35 meters apart. There's a 45 meter lead into the first hurdle and a 45, a 40 meter runoff of the last hurdle, the 10th hurdle to the, to the close. Um, usually a hurdle will take about 21 steps to the first hurdle from the blocks to the first hurdle, and then 13 steps as we talked about earlier down the back stretch. So that was my, I was doing that for the first three hurdles. And I'm approaching every hurdle at the speed of about 8.9 meters per second, which equates to really fast. <laughs> well, it equates to about almost a little, like almost 20 miles an hour, 19 and a half, to 20 miles an hour. So the wind's blowing really hard in Hayes, Kansas, and I'm having problems with my steps. I'm getting 21 steps, 22 steps to the first hurdle. So that means I'm going over with my right leg or it comes up with the left leg. I got to take it with my left leg. And I'm ambidextrous, I can do it with any leg, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but in hurdles as in life, you just want things to stay the same. Same thing with the, the 13 steps for the second hurdle. I'm getting 13 steps and 14 steps because of the wind. And same thing with the third hurdle. 13 steps, 14 steps with that. So I'm like, man, can I just get one consistent? So I get back in the blocks. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to, no matter the wind, I'm going to push through this one because I want to set the race to try to be consistent for the next day. So I get in the blocks, jump out of the blocks, 21 steps to the first hurdle, I'm on. Second hurdle, 21 steps, uh, thir 13 steps to the second hurdle, right leg leads, I'm on again. And I feel that Kansas wind push against me. But I really pushed back against the Kansas wind this time. And I realized about six steps out, I'm going to be short and I have to take with my left leg. No problem. Off the right leg, go across the hurdle with my left leg. When I land, I hear, <laughs> and my body sails and twists in the air. And I see my left shin pass in front of my face. Mm. My shoulders hit the ground and I bounce to a halt. I do a quick once in my body. I look at my shoulders. Shoulders are okay. My waist is okay. Uh, when I see my knee, my knee has risen up, uh, but patella has risen up three inches up my femur bone. My left leg is now canted across my right leg and my foot's touching the black surface of the track. Uh, and the, uh, it was devastating. And before the injury, you know, before everything kind of really starts and the pain sets in, you have this, you have this kind of moment, right? This moment of um, what, what just happened. It's kind of this bewildering moment. And I want to... If I can, if I get it up, I'm gonna. I would like to show you a picture of the injury that day. Uh, so I want to see if I can um, see if I can just kind of share the screen. If you give me sharing rights, I want to share the screen and just kind of show the folks there um, what what's going on in this in this photograph. And uh, so you can see. Uh, see, here. see. Oh, that's the chat box. I can't do that. It's not gonna be chat. So as I'm laying on the ground, I have, um, I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Should. Okay, now, there we go. Now we can edit it in. We can put edit yep. so folks can see it. Oh man. So if you look at the, 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 if you look at it, right, you see my foot's on the ground and you'll see the head of the femur trying to push out from the, the knee. And my knee is actually where that, that gentleman's hand is with the oh, fingers pointing down. Oh my goodness. Uh, and then my head, you, you see that I have a very calm look on my face, but I have a fist, my fist yeah, is Yeah, that fist is balled up. The right. fist is balled up, right? So I'm in tremendous pain, but I'm trying to remain relaxed, right? Yeah. So that's the pain of like the quarter mile. You, you are yeah. in pain, but you want to look relaxed through it, right? Yeah, to you definitely have a pain tolerance. tolerance. The pain tolerance, right. So you have 
Dino Napier, who has, he's, he ran for LSU. He ran uh, 2011 uh, in, the, in the Olympic trials in 96. Uh -huh. uh, ben Curitan, I'm supposed to go to officer candidate school with him. He's in the white shirt looking backwards, cradling underneath my, my head. And Tony yeah. Sylvester with the white ball cap and the, and the glasses, he's a combat medic. And so he knows exactly what to do. He saved over, you know, tens of lives over in Iraq and Afghanistan. So they know what to do, but I'm, I, I'm in a bad state. And the only thing I can think about at that time is just get up. Just get yourself up. But there's no way, right? You're, everything's gone. Every, I just wanted to, to, to not be like this because I've just run a 49.8. I'm on the trajectory to make the Olympic team. Um, you know, I'm going to officer candidate school. My whole life is before me. And so uh, they, they whisked me over to Hayes Medical Center. They reduced my knee, which means they popped it back in place. Uh, the, the legs swelled up. I passed out. And seven days later, I wake up. Well, I'm in and out, but seven days later, I'm, I'm faced with one of the tough, toughest decisions where my wife, Alice, is holding on to my left hand. My parents are on the opposite side of the bed. Little John Jr., he's five and a half years old, playing with a little toy truck, little toy train at the bottom of the foot of the bed. And Dr. Randy Mullins comes in the room and says, yeah, John, you got a tough choice to make. You can keep your leg and use a walker or a wheelchair for the rest of your life. Or I can amputate your leg and you can use a prosthesis for the rest of your life. Man. Yeah, what kind of choice is that? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a choice. I mean, you know, you're at you're at the peak of your game, and then just like that, and you know, it's crazy because when you when I talk to people, the more people I talk to who have similar stories, it it always happens just like that. You know, it's like you're at the top of your game, and you ex you don't expect anything like that to happen, and all of a right. sudden, bam, and you're faced with the toughest decision of your life, I'm sure. I can't even imagine being confronted with a decision like that. Um, yeah, it, it was it was hard in a way, but also easy, right? It was. <laughs> I, I think it, you know, Adrian. I think what it was is it's the it's the acceptance first. Um, once I accepted that, yeah, there's no way I'm going to the Olympic <laughs> Olympic Games. You know, there's no way to, to, to recover from this type of injury. The doc says my legs gonna be fused. My knees not gonna be able to bend uh, except for like 15 degrees and probably have to take an amputation later in life. Um, it was pretty quick. The decision yeah, was, I sound, was in so much pain. I just want, there was the pain that spoke first. So I said, if I can just get rid of my male deductive reason said, if I just get rid of the leg, I'll get rid of this pain. Uh, so that's real pain right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's real pain when you're when you're like, hey, look, just get rid of it. Just just get rid um, of it. Uh, it it was tremendous. I mean, I never felt nothing like that before, right? Yeah. Um, heart rates at like racing at one thirty five all the time. So mm -hmm. I'm glad I was in great shape because you know yeah. if I you know if I was overweight or wasn't in shape and one thirty five is a stressor, right? It's but for me, it's. It's that's my resting almost, heart rate before I start another run. <laughs> yeah, that's recovery. My recovery. Uh, I would be ready for another run at 120. Yeah, like that yeah, was 120. Right. As, as far as my coach was concerned, I was fully recovered full, at 120. Fully recovered. Fully yeah. recovered. Right. 120, you're good. When I'm yeah, tired so, of the kids to do this, yeah. You know, six seconds. Let me know when you get <laughs> so they're like, yeah. They they try to lie on me now, right? So because the pulse doesn't doesn't lie. So um and so your injury, yeah, you hyperextended your, your left knee, and that yeah. and from what I looked at resulted in a, a severed. Okay, I can't, I don't think I could pronounce Pop, it. Popliteal. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And you're on one of the arteries. And yeah. um, that led to you developing gangrene in the leg? Right, because the arteries, you know, they take blood away from our heart to the mm -hmm. organs and, and the places that we need it, right? So with that artery severed and broken, <clears throat> um, there was no blood flow going to the lower portion of my leg. And so the leg just started dying. Oh my so, God. Yeah. Because there's no oxygen going to it. Yeah. And so it goes real fast. Think about how fast our brains will go if there's no oxygen going to the brain. Um, yeah. It, yeah. it just starts immediately, it starts dying. So my my physicality was trying to protect itself. So it was it was stop, it was shutting things down to try to preserve uh, what it could preserve. Yeah.